my dear sisters and brothers in Jesus, the Redeemer. What is worse than losing your sight is to lose your vision. Now, this can be as true of, as of individuals, as organizations, in religious congregations. Because we can start off with a great vision or a mission or a goal, but somewhere down the line, we can miss the whole point. If the gospel reading is about a blind beggar who had lost his sight, then the first reading is about the Maccabees. It's about the, some people of Israel who are in danger of losing their vision, their sense of identity. Now, we heard of King Antiochus Epiphanes, the king of the Syrian who was ruling over there, and he was bringing in what they call the Greek or the Hellenistic influences. That some of them, that made some of the people of Israel ashamed of their culture, ashamed of their religion. The king at that time, as we can have rulers even today, who believed that unity is uniformity, wanted one language, one religion, one culture, and suppressed everything else. And the people revolted. Because there is and should be a unity in diversity. Unity doesn't come from uniformity. Because there is a richness in the world. Now, what we see as the book of Maccabees unfolds during this week of how they're going to resist and revolt against these influences that come to rob the nature of the religion and culture in the land of Israel. To understand the gospel, we need to understand both, not only the text, but also the context. Remember, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. He's now come to the last spot, that is Jericho. That's the last major city before he begins the ascent to Jerusalem. And Luke, in his gospel, has got three events coming up for us. One is, the text just before this, is when the disciples, Jesus is telling them, the Son of Man, the Messiah, basically, is going to be put to death. He will suffer at their hands. And it looks like these apostles and the disciples just can't get it. In today's reading, we have this blind beggar. In Mark's gospel, he's named as Bartimaeus. But here he's got no name. But this blind beggar, who wants to see? And immediately after this text, which we will have tomorrow, is Zacchaeus, the tax collector, who's shot and he's going to climb up onto the tree so that he can see Jesus. It's interesting how this whole theme of wanting to see comes into to play. What is really fascinating and ironical is that finally the blind beggar will see the Zacchaeus who wants to see Jesus begins to see a whole new vision in his life with conversion but the 12 apostles and the disciples still can't see that Jesus is the Messiah. Now there are a variety of characters in the gospel today and a good question to say is which one is me? So let's take a look at each of them. First of all the blind man. What we have is the blind man who when he hears that Jesus of Nazareth is passing by, he calls him out by name. One of the few characters in the, in the, in the gospel who call Jesus by name. We have here this blind man, Bartimaeus as well, in Mark 10. But you also get in Luke's gospel, the good thief who calls Jesus by name. You get some of the lepers who call him by name. So, but there are very few who call Jesus by name. To call Jesus by name shows the sign of intimacy. He calls him not only by name, but a title that is significant. He says, Jesus, son of David. Now, this is not just any title. It's a title of the Messiah. Because they knew that somebody from the, from the line of David is going to be the Messiah. And so he's calling out to Jesus as the Messiah. While well, the disciples are still not getting it. You ask the question, who really is blind after all? I ask myself, do I call out to Jesus by name in prayer? Or is Jesus just some vague figure that I'm not in intimacy at all with? Now, when we look at this blind man, there are two important facts for us to know. Very clear about. First of all, he knows he's blind and he admits he's blind. So he knows he needs help and he earnestly seeks it. 
That's why when he listens and he hears the voice of Jesus coming down, he cries out because he's so desperate to know that. So he not only knows that he needs help, he asks for help. I wish that was true of us because sometimes we need help, but we will refuse to ask for help. It's not my problem. I can fix it. Why, why make a big issue of it? Sometimes issues in homes, in families, in marriages. We just stonewall. But the blind beggar shows us that we need to acknowledge these areas in our life. Now, it's interesting. Jesus is passing by. And so he's so desperate that he, he wants to move from blindness to sight, from darkness to light. So we ask ourselves, have our eyes dimmed? Do we suffer from blindness or any blind spots? It could be of various kinds. The blindness of prejudice, of discrimination that seeks to exclude or thinks one is superior to others. Now, this sometimes we become aware of it. Sometimes it's brought to our attention by others. Do we acknowledge such blindness in our lives? And do we ask for help, for healing? But this blind beggar shows us how. Let's take a further look at him. He cries out. He cries out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. In other words, he is, it's a cry from his heart. The others tell him, shut up. Shut up. But he cries out all the more because he knows what he needs and he's not going to allow the other voices to drown him. You know, he wants to be healed of his blindness. And he's so desperate that he wants help. It's when we realize this in our life that we need help, can any breakthrough ever happen? So that's the first character. How much of it is there in me? We look secondly at the crowd. When the blind man cried out invoking Jesus, the crowd tries to silence him as though he didn't have any right to speak. They looked up at him as a disturbance. They didn't know what was the cry of his heart. He had not only been deprived of his sight, they were trying to deprive him of his voice. There is a, a proverb that I love to quote often. If you want to become invisible, then become poor because nobody notices you. You don't count. And so because he was this blind beggar, he just did not count. So the crowd, which is walking along with Jesus, found him as a disturbance. And so therefore, he, they tried to shout him down. So we ask ourselves, what are the voices in my life that shout me down, that keep me from calling out to God, that keep me from fulfilling my responsibilities to my family, to my work? Sometimes do I say that I'm always busy, but I have enough time for my own distractions, my hobbies and my addictions? Am I caught up in a circle of people who lead me on the path of destruction and not of growth? What are the voices or the distractions that keep me from being my best self? Is it the excuse of work? Is it some unhealthy relationship? Is it some addiction? Is it consumerism or individualism? We need to name this. What are the voices that take away, away from God and from being our best selves? That take away from being rooted in, in faith, in church, and lead us into a life of a lonely existence. Like the book of Maccabees, the first reading, are we in danger of losing the vision of our calling and being seduced by the sick culture that we might sometimes find ourselves in? That's the second group. First the blind man, then the crowd. The third is Jesus. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Now Jesus does something dramatic. He orders the crowd to call the blind beggar. It's important. And so, because he hears the cry of the poor, he invites him. He does something beautiful. He who was abandoned is now embraced. He who was on the margins is now brought to the center. And then Jesus asks him a rather strange question. What do you want me to do for you? Is Jesus blind? Can't he see that standing before him is a blind man? I believe that's not such a dumb question after all. That question is a learning moment for us. Jesus invites the blind man to participate in his own process of redemption. What do you want me to do for you? And he needs to name his need. He needs to acknowledge the area. You remember when the disciples of John the Baptist came to Jesus 
because John the Baptist is there in prison. He knows his time is coming to an end. And he says to his disciples, are you the one who is to come? Or should we look for another? And Jesus gives him a very direct answer. He says, go and tell John what you see and hear. The blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk. And the good news is proclaimed. The blind see. The Messiah is among them. Jesus is giving a message. The Messiah is among them and the blind man recognizes it. But the disciples on the road still have to come to terms about it. Today, the same Jesus looks at you and me in the eye and says, what do you want me to do for you? In other words, name that area where you need his help. This area of blindness, your weakness. Because as Jesus passes by us in the journey of life, just as he passed the blind man in Jericho, what are we going to cry out and call out to Jesus for? So if Jesus were to turn to you and say to you, what do you want me to do for you? What would you say? Would you say, Lord, that I will be able to forgive and not be revengeful, that I might be other-centered and not self-centered, that I might be humble and not arrogant, that I may be at peace and not bitter, that I might be honest and not deceitful, that I might be open and not self-righteous. Spend some time this evening by yourself in prayer and answer the question that Jesus poses. What do you want me to do for you? Because in naming what we want of God, we open our heart to his grace. We remain ready to receive what God wants to offer us. The blind man was able in his blindness to call out to God, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Let us honestly admit where we need God's saving and redeeming grace. And then like the blind man, we also will receive that grace in our life. And then we also will hear the words of Jesus. Go, your faith has healed you. So may it be in your life and in mine.